Okay, let's do some of the chapter 11 homework problems. Um, a lot of these are good conceptual questions. I like this problem a lot, but I've already got a written example there. I wanna go through that one right now. That one has a written example. Uh, this is a really good question. It's a right-hand rule question. A whole lot of what we're gonna be doing for the next two or three weeks is right-hand rule. So don't just guess at that one. Actually think about it. In fact, maybe, maybe let's discuss that one just a second. Okay, so we've got a magnetic field coming out of the page, and we've got these different particles that are being deflected. Um, the charged particles will be going in a circle with the cyclotronic radius that we've discussed. So I've got some magnetic field here coming out. Oh, my, my image just flipped. Hold on. Let me pause and flip that back. It's backwards. Okay. That was going to mess me up if I watched everything flipped. Okay. That marker doesn't work very well. We've got a magnetic field coming out of the board. So we represent that with these vectors, these arrowheads coming out at our eyeballs. I'm just drawing a few of them here. Okay, let's say we had a positive charge flowing through here. So a positive charge, maybe the magnetic field just starts right here and the positive charge just entered the magnetic field. What would happen? Well, remember F equals Q V cross B. And the direction is given by the right-hand rule. This is a cross product. In magnitude, it's just Q times speed times the magnitude of B. That part's easy. It's the direction we've got to figure out. So we're going to use our right-hand rule. You can do this with three fingers, or you can do the curling method. So I'll do it both ways. The three-finger method is point your pointer finger Hold your hand like this, your right hand. Your pointer finger goes in the direction of V. And like my hand is free to rotate around. All of these anywhere around like this, pointer finger is pointing in the direction of V. Rotate your hand until your thumb lines up with, or your middle finger, sorry, V, B, F. So I got to make my middle finger line up with B, which is coming out towards your eyeballs. That means F will point to the right. So I'm going to have, I'm going to color code these, some magnetic field or some magnetic force that pushes like this. So this, this charge is going to come in and it's going to get pushed a little bit. And now like what happens is now it's moving this direction and the force is going to push this way. And then it's moving this direction and the force is going to push this way. So we end up going in a circle. A, what is that? A clockwise circle there. So that's what a positive charge would do. For negative charges, you could either use your left hand and do a left hand rule, or what I like to do for negative charges is play the same game and whatever force I get, just take the opposite. Because we'd have a, a negative Q here. My charge would be negative, so the force would point in the opposite direction. So that's how you're going to do these. You're going to look at these and see which ones of these have to be positive, negative, or neutral. Neutral charges don't get deflected at all. I can tell you right now, E is neutral. Okay, here we've got an electron moving through a constant magnetic field. So that's a negative charge. It's going to do the opposite of what that positive charge just did. And it's it's moving down towards the bottom of my computer screen here. So you're going to have to wrap your hand around 
figure out which way a positive charge would be forced, and then flip it over. These are all kind of the same problem. Okay, so this is a magnetic field pointing out toward our eyeballs. And we have positive or negative charges. This is a magnetic field flowing into the screen. So here, maybe let's do this one. I lost my blue marker, there we go. So I've got a magnetic field pointing into the screen. X's mean pointing away, dot means pointing toward. And, oh, let's do the one with the positive charge moving up. So I've got some positive charge moving that direction. So, oh, I was gonna do it both ways. I was doing the curling method. So this one, I'll do the curling method. So I'm going to point my fingers in the direction of V. And when I curl and make like a, like this motion here, I should be curling toward B. See, V cross B, uh, B doesn't point up, B points down. I'm curling away from B right now. I need to flip my hand over, oh, V cross B, B points down, V cross B. Or if you wanna use the three finger, V is your pointer finger, B is your middle finger, your thumb will be the force. So this guy's force would be to the left. Let's do some, some more problems that don't involve the magnetic field coming out at our eyeballs. Maybe the magnetic field is pointing to the right. So some constant B and say, I don't know, maybe my, maybe my charge V is coming out towards my eyeballs. So I gotta figure out how to put my hand so that my pointer finger lines up with V. And then I gotta rotate my hand somehow. I may have to get in some weird position here. <laughs> I got my headphones in, so this is kind of difficult. I gotta rotate my hand so that my middle finger lines up with B. So I want pointer finger, middle finger, and wherever the thumb ends up is your answer. And that's gonna be that direction. So my force would be towards the top of the computer screen. Right hand rule. If this were a negative charge, I would play the exact same game and whatever answer I get, I would just take the opposite. Or again, you can do left-hand rule. I don't like doing left-hand rule for negative charges because I'm left-handed. And I, if I start using my left hand at all, I'll keep using it. I won't switch back for right-hand rule. So I just don't do left-hand rule ever. Okay, this is a really good question. So we've got some constant magnetic field pointing out toward our eyeballs. We got an electric field pointing up. Both of those are gonna create a force on this moving charge. Electric fields create forces on any charge. Magnetic fields create forces only on moving charges. Moving charges create their own magnetic field and they interact with existing magnetic fields. Accelerating charges create electromagnetic waves, which we call light. It's the last thing we covered this semester. So moving charge or stationary charges, electric fields, moving charges, magnetic fields, accelerating charges, electromagnetic waves. Here, both B and E are going to create a force on this guy. Positive charges 
get pushed in the direction of the electric field. I'm going to have some force pointing up due to this electric field. And it's just F equals QE. Here, maybe I'll write some of this down. So let me see if I can, I can match my colors here. So I've got some moving charge V. I've got B coming out of the board. I'm just going to draw the dots like they did. That's B. And I've got E pointing up. Okay, so I'm going to have an electric force, Fe, that's just Q times E. It's going to point up, so in magnitude, just Q times magnitude of E, and it'll point in the same direction as the electric field because it's a positive charge. What about Fb? I wanted to match my colors here. Hold on. Let's see. B was blue, so I'll write this guy in blue. FB is Q V cross B. Nothing ever moves in the direction of a magnetic field. Magnetic fields don't ever do work. Magnetic fields rotate things. They change somebody's direction. They don't increase velocity. They don't add kinetic energy. They don't do work. So the magnetic field isn't going to be slowing this guy down or speeding it up. All it's going to do is change its direction. It won't change its speed. Okay. So even though B is pointing out toward our eyeball, FB is not going to point in that direction. Nothing ever flows in the direction of the magnetic field. Things get rotated by a magnetic field. So we got to do this cross product here. So V points that way. B points up towards your eyeballs. So uh, <laughs> this is a difficult position because I got my headphones in. I can barely reach. V is that way. B is up. My thumb then will point down towards the bottom of the screen. So FB is going to point down. So these two forces are fighting each other. So my F net is going to be F E as a vector. That's going to be some positive number plus F B as a vector. That's some negative Y component. So we'll just add those together. And I don't know who's going to win. It depends on <coughs> how big the charge is and how big the velocity is. It depends on all the numbers. The net force may be up, it may be down, which you'll see if you get a positive or a negative. Okay, this is a very similar problem. Uh, that one has a, a detailed solution. And that one has a detailed solution. 